Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Hand. In this video, we will take you on a journey through one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects in Europe's history. Join us as we explore the challenges that engineers and workers face in constructing this massive tunnel. ultimately transformed transportation in the region. From the sheer scale of the project to the innovative technology used to excavate and reinforce the tunnel, you'll see how this mega tunnel is a true marvel of modern engineering. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Let us know in the comments that you're subscribed and what you think of this video. We'll apply to you personally. You can also give us a thumbs up. Thanks for that. In a quiet corner of the Baltic Sea, a sleepy German vacation islet is about to be converted by one of the largest structure systems in the world. The islet of Fehmarn sits just off the landmass of Germany and is separated from the South Sea coast of Denmark by a 20-kilometer stretch of water known as the Fehmarn Belt. Construction is underway on a layer between the two countries that will give the missing link in an international trace which will move hundreds of thousands of people at a time and induce billions of bones in profit. First, let's take a step back. The Trans-European Transport Network is a series of roads, railroads, and shipping lanes which connect every corner of the mainland. One of the most important routes is the Overlook Med Corridor the central perpendicular axis of the network, which spans 1,000 kilometers from Malta in the Mediterranean to Finland's icy Champagne. Along the way, it drills through alpine gemstone and crosses firm swells. But follow the route north through Germany and a strange commodity happens. Rather than driving straight over towards Sweden, you have to take a 150 kilometer circle through the total of Denmark. And it all comes back to that small, unpretentious stretch of water, the Femen belt. So, let's just get this straight. There is a transport route that stretches from near the African seacoast to the Arctic Circle, complete with some of the world's most iconic engineering. The Brenner Base Layer, the Great Belt Bridge, but a small stretch of water in Northern Europe is enough to produce a diversion the size of a country? Well, it may not look important, but the Fehmarn Belt has baffled some of the world's stylish masterminds for over a century, until now. The Orsund Bridge is one of those rare feats of communal construction, a megastructure whose armature and engineering come together in perfect harmony to produce a truly iconic piece of structure. Immortalized in the 2011 drama The Bridge, it connects Denmark with the southern Swedish megacity of Malmo. And it was while this crossing was being planned that Sweden had a big idea. Indeed, on a high-speed train that takes about five and a half hours, and for a freight train, it's indeed slower. Germany is Sweden's second biggest import request, so that's a huge deal. The Swedish government saw a roadway at the Fehmarn Belt. Fortunately, that wasn't as outrageous as you might suppose. There's been talk of creating a road between Hamburg and Copenhagen since the 19th century, quaintly dubbed the Vugoflugline, or Raspberry Flight Line. But nothing really happened until the 60s, when a ground was erected to cross the short stretch of water between Fehmarn and landmass Germany. Known as the Fehmarn Sound, that route was also extended to a new ferry harbor at Puck Garden, bringing trains right up to the water's edge. The whole thing was enough laggardly. There was talk about upgrading the route to a fixed link, but it wasn't until Sweden threw down the crucible that effects really got serious. And in 2008, the Danish and German governments inked a convention to start work on the Fehmarn Belt fixed link. The proposed crossing would correspond to a four-lane motorway and two rail lines serving both freight and high-speed passenger trains. The whole thing would be funded by Denmark, who would in turn collect the risk fares and run the onshore businesses. Independently, Germany would upgrade the route from Fehmarn into the landmass to allow for the new trains and business to pass through, which would include erecting another short lair to cross the Fehmarn Sound. It would be a formally and a generation upgrade in the transport network. The Hamburg to Copenhagen corridor would be converted into a high-speed road and rail route. The Swedes would get their roadway to the mainland. A massive diversion would be wiped off the Overlook Med Corridor, and that, in turn, would transfigure the wider trans-European transport network. Water alone stood on the way. 
the most rigorous result was a ground. Feasibility studies have been conducted as far back as the 90s and, as proved by the Orison Crossing, Denmark was good enough at structure construction. The offer they came up with was a three kilometer long string stayed ground sitting about 65 meters above the water so that vessels could still pass under. The string stayed design was analogous to the Orison Bridge, but with one crucial difference. It would be three times as long, and that's where the problems began. It would not be a wild, dangerous ocean, but the Fimon Belt is still awkward enough. It's just under 20 kilometers wide, unexpectedly deep in places, and the soil conditions aren't great for erecting on. Are you enjoying our video? Before we continue with the video, please make sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Also turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on more amazing videos from us. Let's continue to see Europe's new mega tunnel. To contend with the length of the Fimon belt, the ground would have demanded spans of over 700 meters, longer than anything which has ever been erected for a concerted road and rail ground. The plan was to construct three huge pylons, each just under 300 meters altitudinous. The foundations of those would have to be erected at ocean depths of over 25 meters. Throw in poor soil conditions and a busy shipping lane, and you have a mastermind's idea of hell. After careful consideration of the threat of cost overruns and the specialized complexity of the construction, the ground was forcefully ruled out. So, if you can't go over, you've got to go under. No problem there, however, because the Fimon belt is the ideal length for a worried layer. There are many reasons why worn coverts are great. First off, they don't disturb anything above ground. That's why they're generally used for underground railroads in metropolises. But that's also great for a place like Fimon, which has a delicate ecosystem that could take time to recover from all the dislocation caused by erecting a ground. They're precious, but they tend to be more provident the further you go. So the platoon set out to probe the possibility of a worried lair under the Fimon belt. But that too hit a hitch. Worried coverts are dug by a lair boring machine, or TBM. The range of the lair depends on the TBM, but commodities like London's new Elizabeth line use machines around seven meters wide. They're good for commodities like an underground road because you have one track per layer, but Fimon needs a road, motorway, and an access layer. That could mean boring five separate coverts at five times the cost. And that's not all. Very little of the train's face area actually sits on the track. And because the bus is made of sword, there's very little traction. On flat tracks, that's great. It's one of the reasons trains are so fast and effective. But going uphill becomes a bit more grueling. The average mainline train can drive overhead by 2.5% or 1 in 40. Meaning that for every 40 meters of track, the train can move overhead by one meter. The Fimon belt is about 40 meters deep at its deepest point, and any worried layer would have to sit at least 10 meters below that. That would make the layer incredibly long in order for a train to travel into it pass under the ocean and pass successfully again up the other side. A shorter layer would produce a train track that's incredibly steep, and any train presumably wouldn't make it. So you may suppose with a ground and a worried layer ruled out, it may be time to throw in the kerchief. Fortunately still, there's one option left, the immersed tube layer, or IMT. Rather than boring through soil, IMTs are made up of prefabricated concrete rudiments, formally made. These are taken out of fossils, which are dug in the seabed and sunk and sealed together. Once laid, the whole thing is covered over with earth. And hey, presto, you have a layer. An IMT is a great result for a place like the Fimon Belt. It's shallower than a worried layer, so trains have no problem passing through. As well as being a lot cheaper, you avoid the specialized complications of erecting a ground and it poses no threat to shipping once complete. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Let us know in the comments that you're subscribed and what you think of this video. We'll reply to you personally. You can also give a thumbs up. Thanks for that.